Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Timestamp tells you this morning show is a bit longer than usual. Recorded a quick something after my live stream got blank for the second night in a row last night, so stick around for an important message at the end of this show. But right now, we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, where solar flaring is minor. After the M3, things calmed a good deal. Large coronal hole on the south, trailing northern extension. Eruptive activity is expected to remain low today unless a filament snaps. We may get another solar wind amplification from from that coronal hole, you can see how far back it wraps and then up into the north. We'll keep an eye on geomagnetic conditions and the solar wind, monitoring for more Earth impacts. We've got quick weather notes up next. This severe system unleashing night after night in the States is holding no quarter. It's giving us all she's got, and that appears to be a lot. She's not done yet. More high alert level situations unfolding and expected this evening once again. Eyes open, everyone in the danger zone. Pay attention to your local alerts. In the eye candy sector, we've got IMERG precipitation measurements. IMERG has been one of the most important rain and snow trackers for years, modernizing how we measure global precipitation. And they even have a new interactive 3D model you can play with at the link below. Other satellites can track subtle changes down to the color in the leaves. Turns out they think this is gonna let them know when a volcano is about to erupt. Quick version is that the extra CO2 released from the ground prior to eruption should be greening the immediate area in the days and weeks leading up to the eruption. I've heard dumber ideas, that's for sure. But now, a quick word from Mark Zuckerberg. You do have a bunker there. Is there something you know that we don't? No, I think that's just like a little shelter under, and, and it's like a, a little shelter. What are you? Basement. What are you worried about? Indeed, Mark. Thanks for that gift that keeps on giving. You know, whether it's him or Catherine Austin Fitz on Tucker Carlson, this whole thing is going mainstream. The pole shift is underway, and it will result in the death of most of our species and the coming next age of Earth. Goldobservers.com, the sponsor of our documentary on this catastrophe, coming out this fall, can help you protect against the more annoying aspects of this event. On the way down, gold and silver will still hold their value as you might expect, and afterwards, the malleability of gold means it's the first thing you should try to mold, and it has near-perfect radiation protection for what we know is coming. Silver is antimicrobial on contact with blood, and one coin or bar can last generations. Folks, for a thousand reasons, serious preppers stock gold and silver, and for observers, the best choice is to go with other observers. Goldobservers.com Now stay tuned here for the special message recorded immediately after I got censored last night. All right, well, since my live stream just got blanked again, this time in less than 10 minutes, uh, and most of you probably aren't going to see what was said there, uh, I'm just going to repeat myself. So the whole purpose of doing the live stream was to get one point across. All the evidence is there that they are about to take space weather, the risk of solar storms, and then eventually the pole shift and Earth's disaster cycle completely mainstream. And while, oh, more people going to be listening, great, right? No, not exactly. Uh, that means it is going to be a carefully crafted and controlled narrative. And the live stream just cut off when I said, I don't know what they're going to actually be trying to do with this narrative. Um, I, I think that the whole purpose of some of these narratives that we've just lived through and been living through for a while has been to distract from this. So I don't understand what they're doing, but they are clearly aiming to make this mainstream. And unfortunately, um, either they're going to use a solar storm that happens in the next couple of months, or they're going to do it when my documentary comes out. And uh, it's probably because they realize how many professors and official government scientists were willing to talk to us. Um, they realize that just ignoring this or pushing people's direction uh, some other way is probably not going to be the most effective way to handle this going forward. But what is that effective way going forward? I'm not entirely sure, but this is not a good thing. Basically, we're going to be dealing with counter narratives, misinformation, disinformation, um, pretty much everything you could imagine when it comes to not letting the full real story come out. Um, and as much as I want to tell you guys, it's, it's incumbent upon us to fight back against this narrative. How easy was that when it came to uh, 
COVID. How easy is that when it comes to talking about what the weather and climate are doing? It's not so easy to just, I mean, it's easy to say. Yes, it's very easy to say. Pulling it off is another matter entirely. I have absolutely no idea what their plan is, how they're going to be controlling this narrative, but I do know that what we saw this last week, the push about the blackouts that randomly seem to keep happening during solar storms, the mentioning of the government exercise during a solar storm, which by the way happened a year ago, that's when they ran that thing. It was during the 2024 um, solar storms in May. They were actually running their space weather exercise, their hypothetical uh, emergency scenario while that solar storm was taking place. And so here we are a year later, and now they're telling us about it at the same time that the news is also pumping all these blackouts in concert with stories about space weather and solar activity. Now, that's, that's not random. That is them testing the waters. Now, how does this work? They put that out there. They're not going to start running with it next week. This was a calibration maneuver. Anybody who knows anything about psyops, psychological operations, if you don't even know what that means, anybody who knows anything about that, first thing they do is they do a calibration move. They put something out there that they know that the specific target community is going to respond to or at least see shared on social media. And then they want to see how they react to that so that they can either adjust, calibrate, change how they word things. And then they're just ready to go full bore into it. So, um, expect when this news cycle dies down, they're going to back off of this and we're not going to hear it for a while. It's going to come back. And when it does, it's going to come back as a controlled narrative, very carefully crafted. And we all need to be ready for that. That's really all I wanted to say. And YouTube really wouldn't let me say it. Uh, Apparently me yelling at them to give me my live streaming ability back wasn't all I needed to do. So I'll have to find somebody else to yell at today. See you in the morning. Be safe, everyone. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. So again, that's goldobservers.com to support our documentary sponsor. And actually what you're doing is supporting yourself. Don't forget to come visit us in person. Details at observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.